Thanks for joining us for today's message. If you'd like to support this resource and others like it, you can do so by visiting our website, thechapel.cc, and select the giving option that works best for you. Enjoy the message. Take out your worship guide because I want to jump in for a little bit. We'll be here about two and a half hours. Sit back. Just a little bit. I want to start a new series called Heart Smart. We spent a little bit, uh, I was inspired Friday uh, to move the service around a little bit because I, I just can't get enough of, of communion. So I want to change things up right now. It'll be good, but I want to leave you with one thought as we start this series. February historically is like the month of amore, is it not? Just a little bit of love. You got you to gotta, gotta shift the hips. You see that? You got to shift the hips a little bit. Amo, amore. You know what I mean? As love is in the air in a, in a week or so, right? There's going to be a lot of hearts floating around. Maybe not that heart. Don't give a heart that looks like that to someone you love. It'd be weird. Send a weird message. Listen, I want to talk about um, our hearts. About And there's a, this thought um, that I want to make sure we get a 30,000 foot view of what this series is going to look at. And when we think about our heart, even in our culture, even in just our health, there are certain things that we need to be participating in to be heart smart, whether that's our nutrition, whether that's exercise, whatever those things are, how we, how we take care of ourselves in what we intake, how we take care of ourselves on how we or don't physically exercise every day. There are attributes in our physical nature that give us a healthy heart. Well, there are also spiritual aspects of our spiritual heart. And for the next couple of weeks, we're going to go through these things about what it means to be heart smart. But there is this one idea that you have to get, that you, you got to get otherwise in the next couple of weeks, it's, just not, it's not going to make any sense, it's just going to be, and I'm going to jump around because I want us to get to this. Here, here's Jesus speaking about the inside, about the heart. Now, now he says this to the religious community and the, the Pharisees, he says, woe to you. Teachers of the law and Pharisees. And any time Jesus speaks to you and starts with the word woe, it's probably going to be a weird morning, okay? <laughs> woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. See, sometimes I like this picture of Jesus because we often sometimes see him holding a lamb, petting a lamb's head, just like this, looking into your eyes, saying, it's going to be okay, beloved. I love you. Hallelujah. And there's nothing wrong with that picture, but it is one picture, not the defining picture. I prefer to see my Jesus like this, okay? <laughs> you hypocrites. You, you hypocrites. See, what was happening is the religious community was believing at the time that the writings of the way, they didn't have all of the 66 canonized books, but what they did have, they didn't think it was enough. So they added all of these little extra things that you could do to present yourself worthy of God's love. Jesus is amped up. He's amped up. He doesn't like what's happening. They're starting to put on a show a little bit. Jesus says, woe to you, teachers of the law, Pharisees, you hypocrites. You clean the outside of the cup. You clean the outside of the cup and dish. You spend so much time on the things that are outside. In this context, it's cleaning the cup. But I would argue that we spend a lot of time preoccupied and thinking about things on the outside, what people say, what people do, their opinions, their thoughts. One of the worst things social media has done is given somebody or everybody a false idea that their thoughts are important. <laughs> and, and so what happens is here's Jesus, just a general principle, you hypocrite. You're so, you're so enamored. You're, you're so driven by what's happening on the outside. Don't, you, you, you're so preoccupied with it. It's actually become a little bit of a show. Don't you know that you spend so much time cleaning the outside of the cup and dish, but inside you are full of greed and self-indulgence. So there's a little bit of a, of, of a, of a weirdness here. It's a little wonky. 
On the outside, you're trying to have people believe certain things, but you're so occupied with the outside and how things are that you're forgetting, you're neglecting the more important things. And then he talks about the inside in a way that is so counterintuitive to the way culture and society is today. He says, don't you know you're blind? You blind Pharisee. First, not Tuesday, not fourth, not fifth, not on Thursday. First, before anything else, first clean the inside of the cup and dish, and then the outside will be clean also. You're spending way too much time looking about what everybody's doing, what everybody's saying, what everybody thinks, what everybody, that you're forgetting about the heart. We love people with heart, don't we? We love people with passion and with heart and with chutzpah. Nobody likes an athlete that makes $55 million a year and walks around like he just got out of bed. Amen? Right? I want to see a guy sweat. I want to see a guy in the weight room. I want to see a guy take somebody's head off in football. I want to see somebody hit a, I want to see somebody hit a ball 435 feet. Then I'll feel good about you making $55 million. But when you walk around like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't care, I don't know. What, what, what Jesus is saying here is you, you, you're occupied too much with the outside. Don't you know that you clean the inside? The inside is what dictates what happens on the outside. We typically in culture say this, well, the reason why they said that the reason why they acted like that, because so-and-so said this, and so-and-so did that. We use other people's nastiness, anger, bitterness, rage. We use other people's impatience as a crutch and an excuse for us to act a certain way. Oh, but Jesus turns around and says, no, you don't get to do that if you're a believer and follower. What you have to understand is heart smart. Heart smart means you live an inside-out life. If you're terse and angry, if you're bitter, if you're negative Nancy, if you never look, the glass is always half empty, if you always got something bad to say, if you do nothing but just criticize everybody, it's not because of people on the outside, it's because something got inside you that shouldn't have got in. That's the problem. And so all of a sudden, when you start talking about heart smart, being smart, we have to understand as believers and followers that we don't get to say, I said that because they said, I do that because they did. We don't get to do that. Because in God's economy, what shapes the words on your lips and the behavior of your hands is what got in to your heart. It's why the Bible refers to the heart as the wellspring of life. It doesn't mean that we don't create space with toxic people. It doesn't mean that we don't keep a healthy distance from certain people that rub us the wrong way or act a certain way. No. But you just can't. I was talking to, to someone the other day, and um, it was early. It was early in the morning. It was 1030. No. It was, it was early in the morning. I got up and went over here to get some coffee. And the guy in front of me was in line. I didn't recognize him. I told him, tune in. He doesn't go to this church anymore. He, I said, tune in because I'm going to talk uh, bad about you. So I won't say his name because that would be weird. He, hopefully he was watching online. Good morning, Steve. So the idea is, I, said, I was just standing with him and I, and I go, hey, man. I just naturally, I just, hello. I just say, hey, hey. And he goes, you don't remember me, do you? I, I, unless your face was in the post office, I don't know. I don't. I, I said, no, no. And I said, you, do you go to the chapel? No, I don't go anymore. I was like, oh, okay. Now listen, it's early. And I've had coffee, but Jesus don't kick in until about 10. You know what I mean? So I'm like, I say, oh, oh, oh okay. He goes, how's the church going? I, I, yeah, I just, I go, it's going good. It's going good. He said, ready? He goes, how's the money flowing? I, what do you say? Oh, dude, we're all rich. Oh, bro. <laughs> Dollar bills everywhere, 20s, 100s. I mean, I don't even know what to say to that. I'm like, all right, I, do I, if I say it's good, that seems weird. But if I say it's bad, pay for my coffee, that would have been cool. But I'm like, I don't, I, I just don't even know how to respond. I go, yeah, I think, I think it's fine. 
you know. And he goes, yeah, I used to go till you went for my wallet. And I, and I thought, oh, oh, you want to go? Oh, oh, because it's early. It's early. And I can go Brooklyn at the drop of a hat. All right? So he goes like this. He turns around and he goes, he goes, yeah. And I go, did I go for your wallet? He goes, well, not you. I went, yeah, because if I go for your wallet, I get your wallet. All right? Because I'm like, dude, it's like 650. It's like 650. Don't come at me at 650. You come at me. You want Christian Mark Q? Come at me at 11. I'll be good. You know, so he's, and I go, I said, man, I said, no, did we, did we say, because typically we don't really pound some stuff like that. Like, you know, that subject, it's important. We talk about it. We have no problem talking about it, but we don't pound it like some churches may do, whatever. And that's between them and the Lord, you know. So I'm just kind of rifling like in my head, like, what did we, could we have said, you know? And, and I go, yeah, uh, oh, I just go, oh, well, that's a shame. He goes, yeah, you guys are all the same. Oh, man, I'm just like, dude, <laughs> dude, so, so he gets his coffee, get my coffee, we go to the coffee bar, and I go, I said, hey, man, what got in you? He goes, what? But he said it like we were going to fight, and I'm like, bro, we can fight. I got, I literally have no problem wrestling with you in the concrete. <laughs> I don't, I don't. I go, what, what got in you? He goes, what do you mean? I go, why are you so mean? L- literally, why are you so mean? He goes, ah, and he went into this story about a place he went, and, and let me tell you, I have a lot of these conversations in town. It just happens to be that content. I could just, it's the same principle, but it just changed the content, and you wouldn't believe it. He started going into some relationship he had with his church and all this junk and all this stuff, and, and I frankly don't care. You know what I mean? And I'm like, huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And I go, what does that have to do with God? See, Someone else's unhealthiness and dysfunction got inside you, and it is stealing what God wants to do in you and through you and in your family. Now, how stupid is that? That's, and that's what I told him. And that's what I told him. What, what, do you, what, what does that have to do with God? Of course they said that. Of course they did that. Not to exonerate them or make sure, make it like it's okay. No. But to go, we're flawed. It's why we need a savior. It's why we need a rabbi. It's why we need a Lord. I said, but what does that have to do with you? Something got in. It festered. Something got in his heart. It took a root. And now it's shaping his words and his actions. The key is... His unhealthy interaction is not to let that into mine. See, see, the key is that unhealthiness, that bad perspective. See, the key, the key for the believer and follower is, ooh, I see that coming. See, being heart smart is knowing the right things to get let in and the right things to keep out. See, see the, the idea there, because it's not his deal, is, is not to let that get in here and if all I am is concerned about the outside if all I am is concerned about what's going I neglect the more important thing what's going on inside what's happening because apparently in in the economy of Jesus my words and my behavior are shaped by what got in by what got in my heart. And for the next couple of weeks, for the next couple of weeks, we're going we're gonna to work on heart smart. We're, we're going to work on how do, how, do we have a, how do we have a healthy heart? What are those things? What are those attributes? Just like in our health life, in our, in our everyday life, in our natural life, there are things that we can do where there are things because apparently that's where it all starts. See, I want, I want to make sure you get this. The religious community, culture, and society are occupied with the way things look. Jesus is occupied with the way things live. See, they're occupied with the look and the vibe and everybody else and what they're doing, what they're saying, and all the outside. Jesus is like, you're too occupied with the look. Let me tell you what I'm about. I'm about with the way, how you, how you live. I'm occupied with the way you live. You want to live the best? You want to live the way I created you to live? Woo! One thing we got to take care of is your heart. Let's check that thing out first. Amen? 
I got some really like killer stuff. Look at all this. Look, that's like really good. It's really, really good. Woo, look at that one. Woo, look at that one. Look at that. Oh, oh. Yeah, just not yet. Not yet. We had an incredible time of communion. Incredible time as a community together. Let's stand together. As we're standing, don't forget as you leave uh, today, we're launching our international missions trips. All of them throughout the year. They're on the outside, right outside the front doors. Stop by, pick up a, pick up a little printout of all the information. Our prayer team will be on the sides to pray for you for anything at all you need in your life. I feel like, I, bow your heads, I, I want to say a blessing over you because God's going to change people's lives and families in the next couple of weeks, not because of us being together, but because it's His voice through His Word. Amen? Amen. May, the, may the God who's, who is immeasurably able to do more than you could ever ask or imagine, may He bless you. May He watch over you. May he guide your steps. May the peace that passes all understanding rest on your mind and in your heart. May the power of his spirit enable you to do more than you could ever imagine. May you be found in the house of the Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen.